Right, guys, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. No, not actually done before. He's going to get it if he's not a bit quieter whilst we film this. We're going to be preparing two pigeon and a pheasant that I've actually had shot for me fresh here in Essex. I've always said personally I'd never shoot an animal that I couldn't then go and eat. And the only time that I have successfully shot a pigeon, it was at night. It was a really long shot that I was lucky to get. And unfortunately, when it went crashing down, it disappeared into the undergrowth and it was never seen again. So I never got to eat it. So what I've got is my granddad. He's gone down to his local wild fowling club and he's got someone to kindly shoot for us, two pigeon and a pheasant, for me to practice my preparation skills, which I've never done before. Um, it's a bit hands-on by the looks of things. So I've got my stuff all set up to go and prepare these. Hopefully it should make a really good dinner. Um, I mean, you know, people might say about the morality of doing this, you know, it's, it's not very nice seeing animals and stuff, and I just want to warn you, you know, it's going to be quite graphic probably. So if you don't like seeing animals basically getting torn apart, um, you probably don't want to watch this video. Um, but in my opinion, you know, it's the freshest way to eat this food, and it's all local. It's a way of appreciating your surroundings. Pigeon, they are class as pests they do do a lot of damage to crops so it is perfectly legal to shoot them for that reason you know it's been done for us so it'd be rude to waste it now if you saw my suffolk video that I did recently we actually bought a pheasant from the local butchers down in orford and we took that home and prepared it and had a lovely roast dinner and you know my mindset is that if i can do that um then really i should be willing to face actually preparing it hands-on myself um taking a bit of responsibility for what you eat you know and perhaps understanding the process behind it you know compared to your mcdonald's and all the fast food you get battery farming and stuff this is much more you know kind way for the animals to still be able to eat them it's all good quality as well so um without further ado let's get stuck in so we've got the two pigeon the two wood pigeon and we've got the pheasant. Now, the wood pigeon, I'm just going to be removing the breasts from them because those are the most easily accessible part to eat on the pigeon. They've got the most meat on them and they mean that you don't have to prepare the entire bird and pluck it and get the guts out. So they're going to be like the easy mode. And then for hard mode after, we're going to move on to the pheasant. Not only is it a lot bigger, but also we're going to have to prepare the entire bird to do like a chicken roast dinner type thing. So I'm going to have to get a lot more stuck in. Might get a little bit more gruesome with that, but it should provide a really good, natural, healthy meal. So I've got the two pigeon here to start with. I've got a carry bag to put the feathers in so they don't get all over the garden long. And I've got a little bit of water just in case the feathers stick to my hands. And I've got a knife, which hopefully it's sharp enough. I'm not actually sure because it's an old kitchen one that's been knocking around for a while. So we're going to start off with this rather fine specimen there you can feel it's got a lot of meat on that breast there um, so you know it should make quite a nice little meal in all fairness before getting these I hadn't actually held any dead birds before believe it or not um, but it's one of them things that it sounds a bit bit gross but when you've actually got it in your hands there's nothing really too bad about it the feathers are really soft still it's a bit of a shame that it's, it's dead but you know, it's a way of learning about nature and stuff, really. It's all very well buying your food from the supermarket, but really, it's important to actually see um, what goes on behind the closed doors. So, first of all, we're gonna pluck the feathers off the breast of the bird here. And the good thing about this is the breast is on the outside of the breastbone, so you don't have to go inside the bird's chest or anything where the, the organs are. Um, it's all on the exterior, basically, just under the skin. That's why it's quite a clean, easy way to prepare a pigeon. There we go. Come off quite easily, actually. Look at that. It takes a bit of a while, I won't lie, but it's probably because I'm not really used to doing it. I'm perhaps being a little bit sheepish. I think that's where the, he's been shot with a shotgun. So we might find wounds from um, the little pellets, the lead shot and stuff. Now you can open the crop up on the bird to find out what it's been eating, which is just under the head in the neck section here. It does look a little bit messy that, so I don't know if I'm gonna bother doing that. So I think I've got the breast section 
nice and exposed now so we can remove the meat. You see the breastbone in the middle, just that line going down there. You just take your knife either side of that. You cut until you feel the hard breastbone beneath and then you literally can just pull the breast off and maybe use your knife to help you. Not a very sharp knife this. Making a bit of a mess out of it. Dude, it's not as easy as they make it look. There we go. It's our first breast. This one's come away a lot easier. Managed to just sort of pull it off of the breastbone more so. It's one of those things, it seems a bit horrible, but once you get stuck in and you've, you know, you cut it open and you're staring right at it, you just get on with it really. Um, you know, it's not too difficult, it gets a bit easier. Um, the second breast I found easier because I sort of know what I'm doing a bit more um, But you do need a sharper knife really. It's just meat and a bit of skin There's breast number two um, It's looking a bit worse for wear now, so um, we're gonna leave them out on the lawn for the foxes to eat um, so, you know, that's not going to be wasted either. So I've got here two of the breasts removed from the pigeon. So you have one of these on either side of the chest of the bird, sort of like that. And that's all just pure muscle and pure meat. It's really good to eat. In the middle of the um, breast on the left, you can see there's a little hole in the centre there. That is from the um, shotgun pellet. Now the second one I'm just going to get on with that, I'm not going to film it because um, you know it's a bit of a mess to do it. So now we're going to do the pheasant, it's getting a little bit dark now so I don't know how much this you're going to see. Um, but we're going to have to pluck the whole bird and get rid of the guts and the organs and we're going to have to chop off the head, chop off the legs. So it's a bit more involved. First of all I'm going to keep these tail feathers just because they look nice. It's a nice little um, decoration to keep isn't it? Oh dear, I think we might have to cut those off. We'll sort that later. Um, next, the first thing I'm going to do is just cut off the legs so they're not in the way. We're going to get the knife where we want it and we're going to try and um, break the legs off. Go. So that's the legs, the feet chopped off. First, we're just going to start by plucking and trying to actually get the skin off the animal. And apparently, it comes away really easily when you rip the feathers out. So, we're basically skinning it and plucking it at the same time. Something like that. <laughs> so that's the head removed, a bit grisly. Not for children, this. <laughs> but now we've got the bird without some of the skin, and we're just going to take a bit more of the feathers off of it. So I've just plucked all the feathers off it, chopped off the legs, the head, the wings, and the tail, everything like that. Saved a few tail feathers for a little decoration. Um, but now we need to gut the pigeon. So we've got this huge bit of meat now. It's like a little, basically a roast chicken. 
um, and we now need to take the guts out so it might get a little bit messy now. So now we've got to pull the guts out, I've just cut the breast open. It's, all, it's freezing cold, the meat gets really cold because it's wet and that. I'm going to have to put my hand in there and just rip all these guts out. God knows what half of that lot is. I'm sure the fox will enjoy it. There's the heart, which you can eat. We need a bit better light now to see what we're doing to clean it up. We're going to wash it, get rid of all the feathers that are stuck to it. So, the preparation's done on both the pheasant and on the pigeon. Pigeon, we've got the four pigeon breasts down here. Um, that's all just pure meat in there, um, so you can just fry them up. They should be really nice. And then as for the pheasant, it's a huge old bird. I can't believe the actual size of it. But look, you've got the breast alone on the pigeon, um, pheasant should I say, is huge compared to the pigeon. That's one breast, and there it is on the pigeon there. But then we've also got the leg meat, the back meat, everything. I even got the heart that I've saved, whether or not I'm going to eat that, I don't know. The lungs and the kidneys, which are tucked right inside the back of the animal. I kept missing those and I managed to finally remove everything. Um, so that's fully clean now. And all this should be ready to eat for a lovely, lovely meal. So I've just got me in a pan with a bit of butter, a bit of salt on them. And I don't think the pigeon breast takes long to cook at all because it goes brown very quickly. But quite a bit of meat on them. So there we go, it's all done. Got the breast there, and then we've also got a nice beer from Suffolk, from my little Suffolk excursion. If you didn't see that video, go and have a look at it. So we've got the pheasant out of the oven. Look at that, it's shrunk down a little bit, I won't lie. It was actually a huge great bird sitting in the fridge for a few days. But look at it now, it looks like really nice meat to eat. Um, nice and juicy. We haven't put it in there for too long, so it's not gone dry yet. Um, and we're going to be serving this up with some nice vegetables. Right, guys, I've just been eating the various birds that we've been preparing. Uh, I've had the pigeon. That was, um, it was nice. It was actually a really strong flavour, very gamey kind of taste. So I did enjoy it. It was very, very simple and easy to prepare. However, I think the flavour was very strong. It almost tasted like the smell of actually cutting the raw meat up, but still liked it. But the pheasant, for me, that was absolutely beautiful. It tasted like somewhere between turkey and duck. It was a lot more work than the pigeon, but that pays off so much in the flavour. It was really juicy, really moist meat, lovely bit of flavour. And it's basically my first Christmas dinner of the year, uh, because I had it with all the veg and stuff just put the Christmas tree up. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this little video. Hope you've not found it too graphic or disturbing. Hopefully it's actually encouraged you to give it a go yourself. Um, there's so many videos out there that show you how pairing these birds in a much easier, uh, more straightforward, cleaner way than what I've done. But I wanted to show you what it's like for someone that's never done it before, giving it a go. Obviously, you know, it's not always gonna be straightforward. Now I've learned how to do it. I can do it again and probably do it much faster. So, thanks for watching guys. Next time we might even do some hunting ourselves and I can show you an air rifle that I've bought. Um, we might actually put it to the test. So, without further ado, thanks for watching. 